Hello and welcome to another Earnestly Eston book chat. Today let's spend a few minutes with Chapter House Dune by Frank Herbert. This book was originally published in 1985 and I listened to a 2009 Macmillan audio edition of Chapter House Dune by Frank Herbert. So yeah, this is the sixth and final of the Dune novels by Frank Herbert. I read that this was published in April of 1985, and Frank Herbert passed away in February of 1985, I think from complications of pancreatic cancer. Um, years later, his son, collaborating with another author named Kevin J. Anderson, have written about 16 so far, and counting, I think there's additional ones planned, other novels in the Duneverse, but the original six uh, novels of Dune... Uh, there are only six in the original Frank Herbert uh, novels. So, yes, and I wanted to read especially these six. So, yeah, and I'm finally, I've been over the last few months reading through the others. I will link to the chats for those uh, books down in the details below. But let's talk about Chapter House. Um, yeah, so I don't want to give anything away. As I've mentioned in the other, cha in the other chats, I, I don't want to give any out any information that I feel like would detract from a first-time reader of reading any of these novels or any in the series if you haven't read the series. So I'll be very careful to not give anything away. That's sort of tricky sometimes with a series like this where each story sort of builds on the other, but I will try to stick to uh, what's generally known in the general book description as far as describing what the book's about. And then I'll talk about some main themes that I took away from reading this particular book, uh, Chapter House Dune. So, yeah, so what's this about? So this takes place, the action in this in this book six, uh, Chapter House, takes place a few years after the events of book five, Heretics of Dune. So it's been a few years, and the reason why I know that is because one of the main characters, Duncan Idaho, who's actually a recurring character throughout all of the Dune novels, even though this <laughs> this takes the uh, place over the course of about, I think, around 5,000 years, but he is a Goa, meaning it's sort of like a clone. Um, it's a clone that can remember, though, the, all of their their previous memories. So uh, Duncan Idaho who is re, has been a recurring character through all of the books, and he's in this one as well. And he is um, involved with um, a honored matre. So I talked about the honored matres in the previous book. They appeared for the first time in the previous book. They actually come from the scattering, and the scattering uh, was this event that happened following book, I think it was for the God Emperor of Dune. After that, the events of that book, uh, there was this scattering where humanity scattered. Now, we already no longer live on Earth. We already live far flung and many thousands of years away from our time on Earth, where Earth is just a distant memory. But in the scattering, people, because of the turbulent, chaotic events that happened at the end of book uh, of God Emperor of Dune, there was a scattering. And anyway, in book, and in the next book, Heretics of Boone's Dune, some of those people came back, and some of the the main group that came back were, were a, a very violent group of women called Honored Matres. They're sort of like the Bene Gesserits, and I did talk about them in the previous book chat, so I won't go into too much of that here. But Chapter House Dune, I did want to mention what it refers to. Chapter House is actually the headquarters, really, of the Bene Gesserit order. And again, I discussed the Bene Gesserit order in all the previous books, so I won't go into the details of what they are and whatnot. I am sort of planning to do a wrap-up video that's going to wrap up this series, um, and I'll talk a bit more about them, because they do play very, very, uh, very, very, very strong roles throughout the entire course of all six of these novels. But anyway, uh, Duncan Idaho and uh, Mabella of the Honored Matres um, have had a few children at this point, so we know some time has passed, but not a lot of time. But what has happened during this time, the conflict that existed in Book 5, Heretics of Dune, was mainly between the Honored Matres and who are these these people coming back from the scattering, and the Honored Matres who had been sort of in the old empire all along. Although the, their different uh, Bene Gesserits had gone out in the scattering, but when people went out in the scattering because of the the 
because of the way that the transportation system was, et cetera, we didn't, they didn't, most of them were never, or they weren't ever really heard from again. They would go out and then we, you know, the people that stayed behind in the old empire didn't necessarily know where they went or what became of them. Anyway, just some other main characters in this particular book. Odrade is the um, the Reverend Mother for the Bene Gesserit. She was also in book five. Um, I've already mentioned Duncan Idaho. We also have the Gola Teg. So Miles Teg was in book five of um, of, of Heretics of Dune as well as sort of a Basha is called. It's really a military type commander. He's a child in book six because he's a Gola too at this point. Um, so then there's Saitel, who is a the, really the last of the Benetelax. The Talaxians um, have had run-ins with the Honored Matres. The Honored Matres have actually come into the Old Empire and swept away and really uh, conquered most of it at this point. And that's the conflict that's going on throughout the book. Um, you know, there's a couple of other characters that I thought were really cool. Belanda is another one of the Bene Gesserit. I think she was just such a great character. She's sort of the right-hand uh, person for uh, Audrey, the Reverend Mother, uh, but she's just got such a great personality um, that I really enjoyed her character a lot. I've already mentioned Mabella. We also have Shiana in this uh, book, book six. Shiana was a, a main figure in book five, Heretics of Dune. Shiana has a special relationship with the sandworms. So the sandworms that create the spice melange, I've talked about those through all the books, another theme that weaves through all of the books. Shiana is also in book six. She's grown at this point in book six. Um, and then the great Honored Matre, which is basically the leader of the Honored Matres. Um, the Bene Gesserit refer to her as the Spider Queen. And the Honored Matres are really, really a fearsome force to contend with. Let me just say that. They are, they are, they're pretty wild. Um, and they are uh, very difficult for the Bene Gesserit to really... Um, counter in many ways. They're very similar in some ways to the Bene Gesserit. I won't reveal the relationship there. It is revealed in the book. Uh, why, you know, the scattering, like why did they come back from the scattering is one of the big questions of the book that we're searching for that answer throughout the book. Like where were they in the scattering? How did they develop into who they were? And why did they suddenly reappear in the empire? And then finally, I want to mention about the Futars. So the Futars also came back from the scattering. They are a hybrid of human. They look human, but they have been hybridized with feline genetics, and so they're very ferocious and very cuddly at the same time, like sort of like a cat. If anybody's lived with a cat, you know what I'm talking about. The Futars are another force um, to contend with at this point in this book. So I thought that was super interesting. And then also there was in this book an underground... Um, an underground sort of community of Jews sort of that live underground that uh, figure fairly prominently in this book. And I thought that was kind of cool because there's references to religions. You know, we can recognize many of the religions that are talked about. Uh, they've changed a lot from our current time, but, um, you know, they still exist in various forms. And I think that's part of the interesting uh, things about the book. And I, when, in the, when I do the summary chat, I'll talk a little bit more about that maybe. Um, finally, some, you know, some, just to get to some themes, some sort of overall themes of the book. Um, one of the big themes I took away was pressures. This gets brought up a lot about how pressures um, really cause us to evolve and change us and make us who we are. So, you know, like in our individual lives, we get these pressures, these external pressures on us, and we can choose to ignore them or try to hide from them or to take no action against them. But that also makes us who we are, right? We can either take action with the pressure or we cannot. But either way, the pressure is going to change us in some way. That This applies to individuals, it applies to societies, and ultimately it also applies to the human species itself, which is I think what this book, these books are really trying to address. Humanity as a species. So I thought that, thought that was really kind of interesting. And then the life is a game sort of thing where, um, you know, the life that you play, so the life that you lead is really, um, 
it, it gets referenced at one point in the book as a game, but it's those who jump into it and expect that they're not going to know the rules, that the rules might change. Those who adapt to the life as a game in that way, um, you know, grow more and, and tend to, um, uh, I think, excel in, 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 the, in the way the book pre presents it. Um, you know, and that leads me to the next topic, which is becoming is more important than the final form. So becoming towards something, towards a better humanity, towards a better version of yourself. Once you think you've reached that point, you stop growing. And this, this point gets brought up a lot in this book and in others as well. But especially in this book, I think I got this vibe way more than in others where um, like laws. So once a law gets set, it really, you know, it, a law is created in order to um, really stagnate something, right? right? To like not progress beyond it. So laws are difficult to change once they actually get put in place. Once you know something, once you think you know something, you stop questioning it. And then you, once you stop questioning it, you stop growing. That idea of becoming is more important than the final form. I thought that was really, really interesting. And, you know, really in this book, it's applied a lot to government, but also individuals, societies, and then the human species as a whole, as I've mentioned. Um, there's another really cool co topic here around power. Um, you talking about power um, as far as really around the honored matres, but around the Bene Gesserits too, which also have a, a, a power structure. The Bene Gesserits are at this point basically the only power structure of the old empire left. But power, how power, you know, there's this saying, absolute power corrupts absolutely. The book argues that power doesn't corrupt people so much as attract the corruptible. So power tends to attract those who can be corrupted. I thought that was a real interesting sort of idea. And then before I run out of time, I want to end this chat, I think, with a quote, which is about the human, the divinity of, the, of humankind. And I think this is a main theme of all of these books. All six of these uh, Dune novels really it, it pertains to humanity and who we are as a species. And I'm going to talk about that more uh, if I do that, uh, when I do that summary video. But let me just uh, read this quote. It's a prayer, actually, to your divine presence, your human divine presence. And one of the Bene Gesserits, Mabella, is actually uh, offering this sort of prayer. And she says, I stand in the sacred human presence. As I do now, so should you stand someday. I pray to your presence that this be so. Let the future remain uncertain, for that is the canvas to receive our desires. Thus the human condition faces its perpetual tabula rasa. We possess no more than this moment where we dedicate ourselves continuously to the sacred presence we share and create. I think that's so cool, you know, the uh, we're becoming, right? That importance of becoming is more important than a final form. So I will end the chat with that. Uh, Chapter House Dune closes out the six novels of the Frank Herbert series. I currently do not have plans to read the additional novels by Brian Herbert and uh, uh, Kevin Anderson, but one of these days, maybe, who knows? I don't know. But my next chat is going to be Farewell, My Lovely by Raymond Chandler. So some hard-boiled detective fiction coming up next. Chat should be coming up fairly soon. So until next time, take care. Bye.